Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting sledding snowmen and I'm going to be sipping on some passion fruit tea today. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Okay, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, fire red, cobalt blue, Mars black, burnt umber, which I will call brown, green oxide, and deep yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors too if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush. And I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes. And I'll even give you the pencil too. <laughs> That's in the kit for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be doing an outline of our landscape. I'm gonna be using my pencil. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple of markers. We'll connect those markers, but feel free to make this landscape whatever way that you'd like. All that really is needed in sledding is one hill. So you can make just one hill if you'd like, or you can make a bunch like I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you some dots. We'll connect those dots, and by the time we're done, we'll have a couple of roly-poly hills that we can paint. So on the left hand side, I'm gonna come down about a quarter of the way and make myself a mark. So to know where that is, if you eyeball about halfway, you can go about halfway between there and the top of your canvas and make yourself a little bit of a marker. On the right hand side, I'm gonna come up about a quarter of the way. So again, if this is about halfway let, uh, top to bottom, you'll go about halfway between there and the bottom. Give yourself a marker. And then I'm going to connect these two markers. This is going to be the big sledding hill. So I'm going to give it a lot of kind of movement to it and give it some, some bumps and stuff, but it definitely needs to look like it's going downhill. So the next marker I'm going to give myself is about halfway in my canvas on this hill, right about here, somewhere in through there. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to go, if this is about halfway up my canvas, I'm maybe about an inch uh, above that or somewhere in that vicinity. Then I can connect this marker to here. And I think I had a little extra dot in through there. So I'm going to connect this in through here with again, just a roly poly hill. You don't want to make it too, too straight of a line. If you can give it with a little bit of bend in it, that'll make it look more natural. So then I'm going to come in this hill, I would say about three inches or so, three to four inches, give yourself a little bit of a marker. And then on this back hill over here, I'm going to come down or in my canvas, maybe about four inches, somewhere in through here. And I'm going to connect these two with a distant hill of sorts. So I'm going to give myself maybe a little bit of a peak in through here and then just kind of roll it down in through that area. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. You can of course adjust yours any way that you want. We're going to use our large brush for the next step so you can just get ready. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are blue, white, and red. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna make it a little bit bluer at the top. I'll get it to go really, really light as it's reaching the tops of these hills. And then I'll put a little bit of the red down at the bottom so it maybe it looks like a touch of a sunset or a sunrise. So I'm gonna start with white and just a touch of blue on my brush. I don't need much. I really want my sky to be nice and light so it doesn't really take away from my really super cool snowmen that are happening in my scenery. So I just started with a white with just a touch of blue. Now I'm just gonna pick up white with my dirty brush so the sky gets lighter and lighter as it comes down towards the, um, towards the mountain area. If you feel that it goes too light, you can certainly pick up a little bit more blue on your brush if you want there to be a touch more. I think I want just a little bit more up here in this left corner. So something like that. And then again, as I come down, I'm going to be picking up white as my um, secondary color on my brush and then I'm bringing it all the way down to the hilltops and to my pencil mark with just the white on my brush and whatever little remnants of blue I might have. I'm bringing it right to the to the tip of the mountain and that you can even bump into your pencil mark a little bit. It does make it look a little bit more natural if you can keep your brush stroke going left to right as opposed to painting around the hills. So once I've got this on here, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up white with just a teeny tiny, like just a little dot of red on my brush. I don't need much. I'm just going for a little bit of a pink hue and just having, um, less is more. So start out with just a teeny tiny bit of red on your brush and if you want to add more to it after that feel free to do so. But I'm just going to start with a teeny tiny bit so it's just a real faint little hue. I think I might go for, oops I have a little bristle on my canvas, go for a teeny bit more over on this side and then you can see I'm bumping right into my my hill. I'm going to bring a little bit of this up above and then maybe a little bit over here on the left hand side, maybe just a touch more on my brush over here. My paint, my white paint is wet. The, um, so that is helping me to blend this in a little bit. If yours has already dried, you could always pick up a little bit of white as well to get it to blend into that sky above it. And then once you feel like you've got this all nice and complete, we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our snowy hills. I'm gonna be using my large brush. The colors that I'm using are blue, black, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is for each hill, I'm gonna have it darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. So this one's gonna get darkness at the bottom and then lighter moving towards white up at the top. Same thing with this one, it'll be dark at the bottom moving towards white and same thing in through here. So I'm gonna start with all three colors on my brush at the same time and you really don't need a lot because we're gonna be doing kind of like a rubbing, scrubbing type of technique to get it on there. So I got a little bit of blue, a touch of black, the black can really overpower so you don't need much at all. And then just a little bit of white, all three colors on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna tackle these two probably simultaneously and then I'll do the big one in, um, after I get these two done. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this darker tone down at the base of this hill in through here. I'm gonna do the same thing over on this one. I'm feeling that's a little bit too blue for what I want, so I'm just gonna pick up a touch of touch more black and white to throw it into a little bit more of a gray type of zone. And you can do the same thing. If it feels, if you feel like it's a little bit too blue, just back off on the blue a little bit and then just bring in a little bit more of the black and white and that'll turn it more into a gray tone. So now I'm just picking up white with a teeny touch of black as I move towards the top of the hill. And I'm just going kind of almost in a circular type of brush stroke to get this in a fluffy snow type of look. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over on this hill. And I'm 
attempting to get it lighter and lighter so when it does meet the um, the hill that it sits in front of you can see the difference between those two colors so that way it provides contrast and it allows the viewer to understand that there's two hills that they're looking at as opposed to just one and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up white as I'm reaching towards the top of that hill without washing my brush this is going to allow for it to get nice and light as it reaches the tippy top and it doesn't have to go all the way white. This particular hill, this one's going to be covered by a big tree. And even the ones um, back in through here, they don't have to go all the way white. So if yours are still a little bit gray by the time that you're done, as will mine be, don't worry about it. That's just going to add to the ambiance and allow them to look like they're a little bit further away because the colors will be a little bit more muted. And then once I've got these two done, I'm just making sure that I hide all of my pencil marks. So I'm just making sure that, that brings it all the way up to my pencil mark. Now I'm going to go ahead, just make sure that I've got this blended in as much as I want to. Just with a light touch, I can kind of manipulate that paint as it's kind of settling, and that'll help it to get nice and blended in a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and tackle this big one. So again, black, blue, and white are where I'm starting, and I'm starting at the bottom. I want this one to be pretty darn dark, especially in this bottom left corner, so I'm using quite a bit of black, but again, I don't want it to go all the way black. I still want there to be that um, transition of colors that, I, that it doesn't look like it's gone totally black. I just want it to look like it's shadow in the, or snow in the shadow, which is where these light kind of muted blues and grays come from. And then I'm just working my way up. And again, I don't necessarily need it or want it to go all the way white, especially in this mid zone, because this is where my sled is gonna be. So I definitely still want there to be some darker tones or at least mid, mid tones. So that way when I do put, I've got some snow that's gonna be flying up from the front of the sled. When I do put that on, I because I've got a gray base, we'll be able to see that really well. So just plan for that if you want there to be some good um, contrast in your colors and if you want it to look like it's kind of going downhill a little bit more, you can certainly blend it in that direction. That'll give the um, information that the maybe somebody has slid down the hill before the snowman did. Maybe somebody took advantage of it before they did. They might not be the first ones to the sledding party. And if all if the snow looks like it's going in that direction downhill, it'll definitely give the implication that somebody has been sledding before them. And then I'm just going really pretty light up at the top in through here. And then you can just kind of fiddle with it. Make sure that you've got it all the way to your pencil mark and that it reaches that hill that's behind it and then once you've got this all said and done we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step so you can just put the large brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint ourselves some pine trees I'm gonna use my medium brush to start I might switch to my large brush through the midway through the step, but I'm gonna start with my medium brush. I do suggest that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be pre-mixing myself a medium blue color that I'm gonna be using as my base color for my trees. So this will make these snowy trees look like they're far off in the distance with a muted blue type of a color. So the colors that I'm using are blue, black, and white, and I have pre-mixed myself the color that I'm going for. So how I got to this was I used a little bit of my black, about twice the amount of blue, oops, almost just lost my brush there, and then a little bit of white, and then just mixed it together. So really what I'm doing is I'm taking my cobalt blue and adding gray to it. What that is doing is it's desaturating it so it makes it look like it is far off in the distance, um, and it looks like these trees have got snow on them. So once you've got the color that you're looking for, this is pretty good region for me. Then what I'm gonna be doing is I am going to be making myself the um, 
just little representational pine trees off in the distance. I'm going to have some on this hill. I'll have some teeny tiny ones back off in the distance here, and then I'll have a little grove of them kind of mid-hill in through here. So really what I'm doing is I'm going to be just wiggling my brush so I have these almost like pointy type of um, little marks, so to speak, and I'm going to do a whole bunch up in this vicinity in through here. So I just kind of wiggle my brush right at the um, at the base of the, the hill, and then I just pop up these little tiny peaks every now and again just to give the information that maybe there's a little grove of pine trees back there. Each cluster of pine trees that I that gets closer to the viewer are going to get bigger. So I'm going to do a little bit in through here and I'm going to put this one kind of in the middle of this hill. So what I'm going to do is just kind of dot my brush along to give myself like the base of where I want these to go. And then I'm just going to kind of wiggle my brush up in these various um, spots to give the viewer the information that this might be like I said, a grove of pine trees way off in the distance. Pine trees iconic look is just to have um, the triangle or a nice pointy tip to them. So you can have as many as you want. You can put some bigger ones or some wider ones, whatever is visually appealing to you. Just make sure that it all looks like it's it makes sense and it's got, you know, trees off in the distance. And then I'm going to do some at the bottom of or at the top of this hill in through here so this is going to be a bunch of um we'll see the base of a bunch of them so i'm going to just kind of take my brush and kind of just wiggle it along where i want the base of the trees to be something like this i'm going to bring maybe one in through here and then i'm just going to give myself this impressionistic style of trees of pine trees so again my biggest thing is i'm just kind of bringing a lot of them up into these points letting my brush kind of be really carefree and making these marks you could if you wanted to you could have these ones that are getting closer to us if you wanted to put a tiny bit of black paint on your brush to make these a little bit darker than the ones that are in um, farther away. That would make them look a little bit more natural and give you a little bit more atmospheric dimension with them getting um, darker and almost more in focus as they're getting closer to us, but that's totally up to you. And then what I'm gonna do with this color is I'm going to put the base on for the bigger trees that I'm doing. So I'm gonna have two trees over in through here. So I've got my um, my blue color and I'm just gonna kind of say, I want one tree maybe in through here. Right now I'm just kind of doing place markers to tell myself where I want these. These are gonna kind of be nestled behind this hill. And then I'm gonna do a big, huge one over here. So this one it also will be nestled behind my biggest tree. So maybe somewhere in through here get that going on and then what I do is I'm really going to give this a carefree type of um, brush stroke as I'm making my branches I'm just going to start with this um, this medium to dark blue kind of color so I can get the shape of my tree and then I'm going to put some snow on it in in a minute but right now I'm really just kind of um, bringing my brush down in a carefree manner to get these branches to be a little bit longer as they're moving down towards the um, towards the land and I'm going to do the same thing over here so I'm almost using like a down and out kind of um, brush stroke this one's going to go off the canvas and if you see a little bit of the trunk in the in the process if you have these little peekaboo spots that's totally okay you just kind of want to give yourself that point at the top of the tree if you want to see the top actually i think i want this one to go off the canvas let's make this one go off the canvas so i just brought that one up just a little bit higher give us a little bit more perspective on that one and then i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this one so i've got my medium brush that i'm using to just give myself this carefree kind of um structure to the to the branches. This one's going to go right off the canvas in through here, just giving myself this darker color to give myself the um, the idea of it. And maybe one side of your tree is a little bit bigger than the other. Maybe this kind of pops out a little bit more at the bottom. Whatever you're feeling, just go for it. And then once you've got that done, I think I'm going to switch to my large brush. So I'm putting my medium brush away. I'm going to take out my large brush and I'm going to use a combination of that blue plus white 
on my brush. So I'm going to start with a little bit of white and if your base coat is still wet you might not even need to pick up any of this um, any of that that blue to get the snow on here but I'm just going to kind of tap it in on top here to give myself these various actually I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of that blue just so I can get different tones within here and this is going to give me a nice snow co covered pine tree that's got some good dimension in it and I'm just really tapping it in letting it blend in a little bit with that blue but not a hundred percent this is just something that's going to give you the look of these trees having some beautiful snow on them but not overdoing it you can certainly have a lot of paint on your brush and the more snow that's on the top part of the tree the more realistic it will it will end up looking but I'm just kind of tapping it in here trying not to over blend I think that's the that's the um, biggest trick here is to not over blend it because if you over blend it it might end up looking like one solid color so I'm just kind of tapping it in sometimes these branches will look like they're kind of hanging down so I'm just giving that extra bit of information and if I felt I needed any more on top of this I certainly would put it but right now just kind of getting these colors to look like they belong together that's looking pretty good to me and you could certainly add more darkness in there too if you wanted to but I'm digging this and then we are going to be using our pencil for the next step so once you've got your beautiful trees in here you can do any little tweaks or modifications to them that you want and then we're going to be using our um, our pencil for the next step so you can put your big brush away take out your pencil and get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our snowman and our sled i'm going to be using my pencil you can certainly use whatever drawing utensil that you'd like i'll give you a couple of markers and we'll connect those markers and hopefully by the time we're done we'll have some snowmen in fun positions that are sliding down a hill so i'm going to put my sled on first and i'm going to have just a really basic kind of rolled up wooden sled i'm going to um, give you some markers for the front of it so i'm going to have it kind of rolling over like this and they're going to be sitting on the flat part here so i'm going to put my first marker is going to go right about here so if let me just center my canvas here so I can see it. If this is the center of your canvas, I'm about an inch to the left of that. And I'm about, if this is center up and down, I'm almost a quarter of the way down. So maybe just a couple inches below your snow line. And then I'm going to go to the right of that. I'm almost halfway between here and the end of my canvas. So somewhere in this direction and then I'm going to go up maybe about an inch. So maybe this is about five inches or so somewhere in through here. Then you can connect these two with a diagonal line, something like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but something that will give you a little bit of a diagonal. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself another marker directly below here. I'm going to be about an inch inch and a half away from the edge of my canvas, something like that. I'm going to connect these two with a big curved line in through here. So something like this will curve, will give me my curve. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be drawing or painting over it. So it'll be completely fine if it's not perfect. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a similar curve over here, but I don't want the distance. I don't want it to be this wide. So what I'm going to do is when I come down, I'm going to come down straight from here. I'm going to stop right about here, which is almost about halfway up this curve line here. So something like that right in through there. And then I'm going to connect these two with another curved line, something like that. Then I'm going to continue this in a diagonal direction until it meets in through here. So this should look like it's a continuous line. So if you did it um, the way that I did, it should be bigger on the left side and smaller on the right side for a perspective purpose. Then what I'm going to do is all the way up here on the left hand side of my canvas, I'm, I'm just about halfway from top to bottom and I'm in about three half to three quarters of an inch. I'm going to connect this to here. So this does not have to be a super straight line because you're going to be, um, there's going to be some wiggle in your, in the sled as it's coming down and there'll be some snow and all kinds of stuff. So don't be terribly concerned if that's super duper straight. 
Now I'm going to put on my snowmen. I'm not going to put the um, back edge of my sled on yet because my snowmen are going to cover most of it. So I'm going to do my first snowman, the front one, the biggest. I'm going to have this one come in. I'm going to do two balls, one for the belly, one for the head, and then I'll do any for the little legs that are sticking out. So this first one is going to be really big. I've got this one coming out in through here. I don't bring it all the way to the edge of my sled, but pretty darn close. And the other side of this um, snowball is going to be about halfway in my the front edge of my sled, or maybe maybe a little bit. Yeah, that looks maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit like this. There we go. Just give him, make sure he's got enough enough to drive the sled. <laughs> and then if I was to travel in through there, that would just connect me in through here. I'm going to put a snowball leg on in through here, so just a big circle. And it's okay if your circles cross over one another. You would just erase the line um, on the snowball that sits in front. I'm going to put my head on, so my head is going to be smaller than the than the body part. So you can certainly continue the whole circle like this, but what you'll eventually want to do is just erase those middle lines. So if that you don't have to erase them all the way, it just makes your painting process a little bit easier if you don't have that pencil in between. So now I'm going to do the next one. This is going to be a, a smaller snowman that's sitting behind this one. So I'm going to put a circle, the body circle, in through here. Again, staying a little bit away from the edge of my um, of my sled. I'm going to put a snow leg on this snowman. I'm going to have like with its leg wrapped around this one. So I'm going to put a snowball leg right in here. And then again, I'll erase that inside pencil mark just to make my painting job a little bit easier. I've got my snowball up in through here. So this one kind of sits directly just right on top of that one. And then again, just erase those lines in between. And again, it doesn't, you don't have to erase them 100%. It just makes your painting process a little bit easier. This third one is going to be smaller than this one. And this guy's going to be leaning back a little bit like he's almost falling off the sled, but not quite. Maybe he's just leaning back in, in excitement. So I'm going to have that ball like that. And then the, the second one is going to be a little bit to the left of the top like that. I'll erase those inside lines and you're going to see both of the legs on this guy. So I'm going to have one in through here and then I'll have another one in through here. So the one on this side is actually going to be on the other side of this of the main snowball. So I'm just going to erase this one little line for that one and then this one I'll erase the one that's in between. We're going to have hats and all kinds of other stuff that we'll put on later but I just want the snowballs now. And then I just need to, if there's any little piece where my sled might still be showing, I want to close it off in through there. And then if I feel like there would be a little bit in through here, I would close that off as well. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your pencil away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the sled. I'm using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, brown, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm in essence just going to paint it black or paint it brown to start, and then we'll add some details. So I just picked up some brown paint, and I'm going to go all the way around my snowman in through here. I'm using a thin-bodied um, student-grade paint. So mine tends to be very translucent and you'll be able to see light spots and dark spots. So when I'm in this area back in through here, I'm going to really move my brush quite a bit so I can kind of mess up that um, translucency so it almost just looks like it is um, a soft kind of color in through here. And when I get to the front, I will utilize the translucency to give myself um, some streaks, almost like it's kind of wood. But right now I'm just kind of painting this on here, making sure that I get all the way underneath my snowman. I'm going to give it a little bit of shadow underneath my snowman as well in a second. But right now just kind of getting this, um, this base coat on here. So if it is a little bit see-through, I'm totally okay with that because I will be um, utilizing that to my advantage in a minute. This front end right here, I'm going to be using a um, 
a left to right brush stroke, but in the diagonal of the actual um, front of it. So I will also kind of give this little edge in through here. And then as while the paint is wet, I just kind of pull it in towards the center. So this might look like a little bit of a wood texture by the time you're done with it, which is fantastic. And of course you could paint your sled whatever color that you would like. If you want yours to be, you know, purple, you could paint it purple, you could put polka dots on it, you could really do whatever you want. But I'm utilizing um, this brown to kind of give it a little bit of a wood grain type of look. I think that adds to the winter element of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some a little bit of shadow underneath my snowman. So I'm putting a little bit of brown and black on my brush. And I'm just really going to put a little bit of darkness underneath them. So it, it looks like they're in fact three dimensional and casting a little bit of a shadow onto the sled itself. So just a little bit of brown and black. This one I think would have the shadow kind of in between them because they're really close. So this, this guy might be putting a shadow on the, on the surface of the sled a little bit in through here. And then this one might be casting a little bit of a shadow back in through there. You don't have to go hog wild, just something to add that little bit of extra dimension to it. I'll put some uh, in between this front little portion too. I know that that's going to be my snowman as well, but we're just going to put a little bit of brown and black in through here. So this will make it look like it's, you know, sitting underneath and those will look, the front edge will look like it is in front. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put brown and white on my brush. So brown and white is going to give me a little bit of an edge to the um, sled on here and along the side. So I have brown and white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna kind of give myself a nice little edge to it. So this way it looks like more than just a piece of paper. It looks like something that's got a little bit of substance to it. And then I just bring this light uh, brown and white edge all the way up the side of the sled. So this is a great time to, if you wanted to make any little decorative elements on the side of the sled, you could certainly do that. But putting those two colors on my brush at the same time gives me this great kind of diversity in the color and I can kind of have fun with it a little bit. We'll put a little shadow underneath the sled when we um, go to do our final details on the snow. And then of course, if you wanted to do anything additional with this front edge, you certainly could do that. And then we're gonna be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your sled done, you can put your uh, medium brush away, take out, just make sure your pen, all your pencil mark is gone. Take out your um, large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna paint my snowballs. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are white, brown, and blue. And how I'm gonna in essence do this is I'm gonna be using a dotting stippling type of technique. I'm gonna paint them all with white first, and then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of blue, blue and brown and give myself little contour shadows that are gonna make these cute little legs pop out, It'll give this one a shadow from this guy. It'll be a shadow on the belly and it'll provide that dimension within our snowmen that would be so much fun to have. So I just loaded my brush with white paint and I'm really just gonna be dotting it. It's okay if you dot all the way to your pencil mark and just give the edges of your snowman this fluffiness if you want. You can have it really smooth, but I like to have my snowman nice and fluffy. So I do this dotting type of technique in it and it helps me to, to get the texture that I want. So when I get to my pencil, pencil marks that are in the sections that are going to touch another snowball section, you can certainly leave a little bit of that pencil so you can see it so you don't lose it. So when you go to do the, um, the shadowing around that snowball, you'll be able to see it. And of course, when you get right to where your sled is, I just slow down a little bit so I don't get too much snow overflowing onto my sled. And same thing in through here, just kind of slowing down just a little bit using the corner of my brush to just tap in that white 
snow and same thing down at the bottom so I'm just using like the little side of my brush to get this in I like using these bristle brushes for this type of step because it gives me great texture um, on on this these particular objects and I like to have lots of texture in my painting so <laughs> this works out really well for me so I'm just reloading it with white paint giving myself the um, the dotting layer of white on this second snowman and again I'm going to do this to all three of them so I can have the base coat of white and then we'll just add little shadows where we want them to be and then we'll have these robust little snowmen that are having fun sledding down this enormous hill in a I think it's a snow family affair, snow snow person family affair that we're having here. And this one right in through here. And the darker your snow was behind, obviously the more these guys are gonna pop out. If your um, snow was very light behind them, they may um, kind of blend in a little bit with that background snow, but when we put the shadows on, you'll be able to see them a bit more. So now that I've got the shadow or the um, the white snow on there. I'm not even going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit. And when I say teeny tiny, I mean a teeny tiny bit of blue paint on my dirty brush and a teeny tiny bit of brown paint as well. And you can even just kind of wipe it off on the side of your palette. You really hardly need any. And then what I'm going to do is decide where I want these shadows to go. So I definitely want them in between my snowballs. So I'm going to just put a little bit down at the bottom and in between these two little guys and you can even within like the foot um, snowball you could put a little bit of the shadow at the bottom that's going to give it uh, that snowball that pops out a little bit of dimension I want some shadow underneath here where it's going underneath my sled in through here and the shadow is just going to give you that roundness to um, to the snowball I'll put some on the back side of this little guy. And when you go from one snowball to the next and you have to reload your brush, you may end up picking up more brown one time or more blue the next time. And that's just going to make it look even more realistic, realistic, because <laughs> because snowmen really always slide down sleds on hills. I'm gonna put a little bit of this in between um, where the, the scarf is gonna go. I even put a little bit around the top side or the outside of the head just so I have that good roundness to it. You can at any time pick up more white. Like I feel like I want this to be a little bit whiter in the center to make sure it covers that background. So I picked up a little bit more white to help along that um, that plight of mine. So if you feel that you need to do the same thing at any point, feel free to just pick up a little bit more white. So I'm going to go to the next one. Again, just a teeny tiny bit of blue and brown on my dirty brush. And again, you might pick up more blue, you might pick up more brown, whatever happens, happens, just roll with it. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just give myself, tap in a little bit of shadow around this snowball, tap in a little bit around the back side of this particular one and I get it to just blend in with the with the lighter part and if you if you're not able to blend it in you can always pick up more white I actually want this to be a little bit darker behind here so I'm gonna pick up a little bit more uh, brown on my brush just so I can really tap in a shadow that's a little bit darker so you can see the difference between these two and it'll imply that he's he, I think this is a male snowman, is casting a shadow on my female snowman. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit in through here, picking up just a little bit more white so I can get that shadow to be a little bit less. So something like that. And then I'm gonna go around her head. I'm probably gonna pop in a little bit more white um, in the center of her head and in, this, in her belly just to make sure that I've got that as white as I want and that everything blends. So I just washed my brush. I'm picking up a little bit more white just so I can tap this in through here so they blend in together. And sometimes when you're doing um, these multi-layered quick 
kind of steps like this. You might need to give it a minute to dry in between. Um, that's going to be totally up to you if you're if it's not drying quick enough and you're not able to layer the colors the way that you want it might just mean that you need to give it a second to dry so if that's the case then just let it dry it doesn't need to um, you don't need to muscle through it being wet you can just let it dry and then add that additional layer on top of it and then I'm going to go ahead and go for this little guy here so again just a teeny tiny bit of blue and brown on my brush I'm going to add that bit of a shadow around the snowball feet and around the edge of the body in through here and you might also need a smaller brush so if you're going through this and you're like oh this bristle brush is just too big pick up the medium brush and that you can just especially on this smaller guy like this you could certainly utilize that medium brush to execute the same the same process by putting tapping in these little dark areas where you feel like you want that shadow to occur. I'm going to uh, wash my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white so I can get that belly area to go a little bit brighter for me and get this to just kind of pop out and make sure that it blends in with that shadow that I just put on there. Yeah, this is looking good because I know that he's going to be leaning back. So I'm probably going to see the bright, bright belly in through here and his little bright snowball feet something like this and again if you lose the definition you can certainly put a little bit of that um of that shadow around it that'll give you that contrast that that you that would help you to be able to see it a little bit more and then once you've got all of your cute little shadows and all your dimension on here we're going to be utilizing our let's use um our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush away. Oh, these are gonna be so cute. Take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our faces. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are red, white, and black. Of course, you could use blue for some eyes or you can kind of customize it whatever way you want, but I'm gonna keep it nice and simple with some rosy cheeks and some pebbles. Oh, and I'm gonna be using yellow too because we need some orange for the carrot nose. So we'll be using yellow as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, first put some rosy che cheeks on so I need some pink. So I'm gonna be using red and I'm gonna mix in some white. So red is very powerful, so you do not need a lot of red. You just need a teeny tiny bit to give you yourself just a nice, light, rosy little pink. And then once you've got the color that you want, you're gonna put it on it where you feel your cheeks are gonna be. So my, my guys are going that away, so I'm not gonna have them looking straight at the camera. I'm gonna have them looking that way a little bit. So I'm gonna have my cheeks are gonna be somewhere in through here. This guy is gonna be looking down the hill a little bit, so I'm gonna put these rosy cheeks about, if this is halfway down his head, maybe a little bit further than that, and I'm gonna put them somewhere in this vicinity. Once I get them on there, what I like to do is I'll wipe my brush off on my paper towel, and then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint to just get it to blend in with the snow around it. And if you feel like yours is too pink, just add, keep adding white to it, and just kind of keep dotting it in there until you feel that it is natural looking as natural as snow people rosy cheeks can get and <laughs> you can have it far out on the face or just kind of keep it in this general vicinity it's whatever is going to be visually appealing for you is where you should take your rosy cheeks <laughs> and then once you've got one done i'm just kind of rubbing it in here making sure it looks as natural or as you know, blend it as I want it to be. Then I'm gonna move on to the next one. So again, just my little bit of pink. I'm gonna have her head kind of tipping down a little bit too, but again, it's gonna be to the side. So I'm just gonna put some in through here. Think of wherever you want your eyes to go. It's gonna be a little bit below that, or just think of wherever your own cheeks are. <laughs> That's where you'll put a little bit of rosiness. And then once I've got it on there, you can bring it into the middle of the face a little bit if you want to. And then I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of white to get it to dissipate or you know fade out into the rest of the snowman head. 
Um, and then once I've got this one done, I'll move right on to the next one. So again, just doing my rosy cheeks first. I love putting this little element of, you know, life into even cartoon characters because it helps to just bring more to the story and it makes it for me much more fun to paint. So this guy, he's leaning back, so I'm gonna have his cheeks are gonna be pretty high up on his face, so I'm gonna go somewhere in through here and maybe something like this. And then once it's on there, gonna pick up some white paint and just make sure that it gets all faded into the rest of the face. So once I've got my rosy cheeks, now I just gotta add my, my, fe my facial features. So I'm gonna do pebbles for the mouths. I'm gonna do these cute little squinty kind of eyes. And then for the nose, I'll do a carrot for the nose, but I like to put a little shadow where the carrot sticks into the nose. So what I'm gonna first do is just kind of plan it out. You can use, um, I'm just using black paint. You can certainly use any color that you want. I like to use it with a little bit of water on my brush so that way I have um, a nice fluid brush stroke. So I'm gonna have his mouth, he's gonna be kind of looking to the side. So I'm gonna start the mouth over about halfway from left to right in my, um, in my face, somewhere in through here. And I'm just gonna kind of give him this little kind of fun Cheshire type of smile. He's looking off to the side or he's looking in that direction a little bit so the, so the mouth will kind of be tipped to the side. I'm gonna put a little curved mark where I want the carrot to be stuck in the face. So I'm gonna just give a little kind of curve like that. And then I'm gonna put some cute eyes. So I'm gonna give this little bit of a downward curve for to represent where the kind of cheeks are under or where the eyes meet the cheeks, something like that. And then I'll just put a little kind of oval type of shape for the top part of the eye, something like that and like this and just giving myself that adorable little look. And then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint to give myself a sparkle in the eye. So a little sparkle, little sparkle. And then I'm gonna put a carrot on his nose. So I just washed and dried my brush. I need to come up with an orange color. So yellow and red is gonna make orange. So I want this to be um, a real kind of orangey orange, so I don't want it to be too see-through, so I'm gonna to touch a tiny bit of white paint in there so it, it helps with the opacity of it. That's looking pretty nice and orange for me. So once you've got your carrot color, I've got it on here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put my carrot in, my, in this little sliver in through here, and then I like to have kind of crooked carrots for my noses, so I'm gonna just bring it out like that. And then I'm picking up a touch of white paint and giving myself a little bit of a highlight on top of it. So I'm gonna repeat the exercise for my next person in through here. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black paint. I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna kind of plan hers out a little bit differently here. Uh, she's gonna be, looking kind of at the back of his head and she's a little scared. <laughs> so I'm gonna put um, her mouth, I'm gonna first anchor her face with her nose. So I'm gonna give her the little curve for her carrot nose. I'm gonna have that in through here. I'm gonna have her mouth is gonna be open. <laughs> so I'm gonna put these little dots her little pebbles are gonna be something like this and it's she's gonna have her mouth open and be like, oh no, slow down, or whatever she's attempting to say. So that's gonna be her mouth. She's gonna have some really pretty snow, snow woman eyes. So I'm gonna do the same thing with giving the um, curved line to where the, the bottom side of the eye is gonna go. So something like that and like that. And then I'm gonna give her this same kind of oval for the top part, an oval for the top part, and I'm calling her a lady, so she's gonna get some eyelashes too. So I'm just gonna flick out a couple of pretty eyelashes. Come, ooh, that was a big one, coming out the sides like that. That means she gets another big one over on this side. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a dot of white paint for the little sparkle in the eye. So one dot there, one dot there. And then I'm gonna pick up some of my orange paint to give myself my, my carrot nose. 
So hers, I'm going to have maybe at a little bit different of an angle than his was. So we've got this one there, and then let's come, let's come down like this for hers. And I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint, give myself a little bit of a highlight. And that's what I'm going to do for her. So I'm going to move on to this little guy here. So washing and drying my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my black paint. Uh, he's going to be leaning back. I don't know why I'm calling him a he. He certainly could be a little girl too. So I'm going to put... Um, let's see, we're going to put the little carrot part in through here, so just a little kind of curve. I'm going to have him really having a good time, so I'm going to have him with his mouth open and smiling, so he's going to have that going on in through there, and then his mouth is going to be open in this direction because he's leaning back a little bit, so like that. And then I'm going to have his eyes closed. <laughs> but, so I'm just going to do that little cute um, downward curve, and I'm just going to give it the idea or the impression that his head is back a little bit, like that. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to put my orange color on there. So a little bit of my orange, and his carrot is going to go kind of up in the air a little bit, so I'm going to put this on in through here and then I'm going to pull this up right underneath his eyes something like that and then I will pick up a little bit of white paint and give myself a little highlight and then we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so once you've got your adorable faces on you can put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some hats and scarves. So I'm using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using a red, yellow, green, white, black, maybe some brown too, but I'll call out all the colors as I use them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this little guy back here. He's gonna get himself a green hat. So I'm just gonna use the base color or, um, so he's gonna get green, she's yellow, he's red. So I'm just gonna use that single flat color for the base color and then we'll come back and do some highlights and shadows. So you can have whatever style hat and scarf that you want. I'm just going to go for some fun like knit looking types of hats. So I'm going to be applying this um, with a dotting type of technique but when I first get it on there just my shape of the um, hats I'll most likely just wiggle my brush a little bit to get um, the idea of where I want it and how I want it to kind of lay on the head. So this one, I'm going to put this in through here. It's going to have um, a little fun part that kind of pops up like this. And then I've got, I'll do like a little pom-pom thing. I want it to look like he's, you know, again, got his head kind of back a bit. So I'm going to just give it a little bit of movement in through here with this little pom-pom kind of going flying off in the distance, something like that. And if you want it to look fluffier, you'll want to pull that hat out a little bit past the head of the snowman. So that way it looks like it has enough, um, enough thickness to sit on the head and is also going to keep his head nice and warm. So the, the bigger the hat is, the warmer it's going to appear. And I'm going to put a little scarf on here. Um, and when doing the scarf, same thing, just pop them out a little bit farther than the snowman. Um, and when you go to do it around the neck, the fluffier it is, the less it's going to look like it's choking your snowman. So if you have a nice big fluffy scarf, it will look like, you know, he's able to breathe and it's not a little too tight around the neck. So I've done many, many snowmen with scarves with classes. And that's one thing that I find happens quite frequently is um, the scarves end up really tight around the neck. So I just make sure that I have enough uh, fluffiness there. So the, the snowman can breathe as he's sledding down the hill. <laughs> and then I'm gonna switch colors. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna go in for yellow on my um, second snowman. So again, just some yellow paint that I've got on my brush. I'm gonna plan this one out. I think this one's gonna be kind of really nice, just kind of sitting on her head somewhere in through here. I think I'm gonna actually use a little bit of white. So I have yellow and white on my brush. The, uh, the white will help for this paint to not be so see-through. I am going to come back and do a second layer on it, but this just will help me get it to look a little bit fluffier from the from the start. So I'm going to pull this out just a little bit and get it to come down the head a little bit. It doesn't just have to sit right on the tippy top of the head. If you can get it to kind of come down 
uh, over that initial circle a bit, that will help sell the story also. That is, it's actually on the head or, you know, covering the head and keeping the head warm as opposed to just, you know, hovering above the head. I'm going to put a little pom-pom at the top of this one with, again, a little bit of yellow and white on my brush. And then she's going to get the same color scarf. So we've got... Um, yellow and white is on my brush and again her neck is in through here I'll pop it out a little bit further than her neck and then I'm just gonna bring it down in through here she's gonna have um, her her scarf is gonna be kind of knotted at, around underneath her mouth in this area in through here so that's where I'm gonna put hers um, the scarf piece is kind of flying out so this is gonna get me started and now I'm just gonna kind of give this piece coming out over in through here, letting it really kind of trail off into the wind because he's going super fast down the hill. So her, her scarf seems to be just, you know, flying all about. So I'm going to put that in through there. And then while that's drying a bit, I'll go ahead and I'm going to do um, the base coat for his hat and scarf. So I'm going to, so I wanted to reshape hers a little bit in through there, just a little bit more. There we go. That's making me happy. Put it up a little bit in through here. We need it to be fluffy enough. I like fluffy hats. All right, wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put his hat on. So I want him to kind of look like he's almost leaning down the hill a little bit. So I'm going to have his hat kind of tipped a little bit more forward. So I've got it coming maybe up in through here. Let's bring this down his forehead a little bit like this. And then maybe it comes out in this vicinity. And don't worry about painting over trees or anything like that. Just have fun with this. Let happen what's gonna happen if, you're, if your hat turns into something a little bit different than you had anticipated it to be, or if you cover up something, a tree that you really loved, just, you know, paint another tree or just enjoy the process because everything about this um, should be enjoyable. And if something happens that you didn't expect to happen, just embrace it. Let it, let it, you know, be part of the magic of your, of your painting experience. And then I'm going to put a little pom-pom part up in through here. And then I'm going to give him his scarf in a second here, just making sure I've got this as fluffy as I want it. Yeah, that's looking fun. <laughs> They'll look even fluffier in a minute when I put the highlights and shadows, but I'm going to have his scarf coming out in through here. So again, it's going to kind of pop out over here on the side. I'm going to bring it down and making sure that I keep kind of that circle type of a shape for his um, for his face. And this one's going to come, I got to have it coming out back in through here. So it keeps the back of his head warm as well. And then just bringing it down in through here. And then I'm going to have his flying out over in through here, just like hers is. Maybe it comes out in through here. And again, you can have yours moving whatever way you want, whatever way you feel would be natural. Maybe this is going to be a little behind this. Or maybe, yeah, let's put it a little bit behind this corner in through here and then just kind of coming down his side in through here. And you can have little frayed edges to your scarves if you wanted to have little tassels. It's totally up to you. So now I'm going to put the highlights and shadows on it. So washing and drying my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and black on the tip of my medium brush. So a little bit of brown and black. I need shadows underneath the objects as well as maybe on the backside. So I've got a little bit of brown and black. So I'm just gonna kind of rub it in underneath my scarf in through here to give a little bit of dimension on the, um, on the shadow on the um, snowman. And if you want there to look like there's a knot, you can put a little shadow in between or underneath that knot, something like that, or in between the, the pieces of the scarf. That'll make it look like there's little pieces of the scarf. I still just have the brown and the black. I want to put a little bit of a shadow underneath um, the head or underneath the hat where it meets the head. So I'm really just kind of tapping in this darkness because I know that my hat is fluffy. So if I, it can be like a little ruffled edge for that um, shadow. So a little bit of black and brown is gonna do that for me. And then I also wanna do um, the back side of the hat in through here. So just a little bit of black and brown above that um, rim of the hat would give me a little bit of 
um, dimension here and then maybe a little bit in the bottom of that pom-pom something like that I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and then green and white are gonna be my highlights for um, this scarf so I just picked up a little bit of green to kind of re-wet um, those areas so a little bit of green starts me off to re-wet and give a little bit more substance in through here. And then I'm picking up, without washing my brush, a tiny bit of white paint and just kind of dotting it in here. Dotting it towards the upper side of the um, cloth, which will give it a little bit of um, that textural element, but also give you a little bit of a highlight. Or it can say... It can tell the viewer that maybe there's some snow on the hat a little bit. If you wanted to speak of snow, you can certainly do it that way. And then I'm gonna repeat that thought process for her hat. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna start with a touch of um, brown and black on my brush. And I'm gonna give a little bit of a shadow underneath all of these pieces. So really just kind of rubbing my brush in. This is where I want my knot to be, so I'm gonna put a little bit in through there just to indicate that this um, little piece is in front of the other ones. This one's going to be just underneath. So something like that will give me this one's on top and that one's underneath. And then if I want some shadow underneath um, on my snowman to indicate that the, that the fabric is lifting away from the snowman, you can put the shadow a little bit away from the actual um, from the actual scarf, that'll indicate that the it's casting a shadow on the snowman, but it has lifted away from the snowman a little bit. So that's a, a neat little trick to get that dimensional element on there. And still, I just have the black and the brown. Going to give myself a little bit of a shadow underneath the rim of the hat on the snowman's head. Something like this works for me. And then. Oh, I've got a little bit extra in the face and through there, that's okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit in the hat. So a little bit of black and brown is going to give me some shadow on this back side of the hat. I need a little bit more paint on my brush. So just a little bit of black and brown. And even if you're going through wet paint when you do this, that's great because that's just going to give more, it's going to blend it in better. So if you are going through a little wet paint as you're adding this shadowy aspect on here, just again, embrace it. That's what's going to make the elements look more realistic. I'm going to put the light yellow on, but first I washed and dried my brush. Now I just reloaded with just yellow paint to get this, um, get that wet layer on there and make sure that it's kind of blended in with that shadowy area. Now I'm picking up some white paint without washing my brush to give myself this fluffy highlighted edge to it, something like that. And I'm going to do that to each kind of tier of my hat like that, give the top part this real little fluffiness over on the top. I can't forget my scarf, so I just wiped my brush off, picked up the yellow to give myself, again, that wet layer before I go ahead and add the, um, the highlight. So just a little bit of the wet yellow. Now, without washing my brush, picking up a bit of white just to give myself a little bit of a highlight on here. And of course, you can certainly get this to be as fluffy as you want or as subtle as you want. I'm just kind of giving it this real loose dotted type of textural effect, which will help for my eye to feel like it's a nice fluffy warm piece of clothing that they are wearing. But again, you could certainly um, utilize any type of stippling technique that will help you to get this fluffiness or multiple layers, whatever works for you. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to do the same thing for my for my red clothing here. So wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up a little bit of black and brown, giving myself the shadow underneath the hat in through here. I'm probably going to pull a little bit more shadow um, on the back side of this guy's head because his head is down so far and he's quite larger than the rest so I feel like I might kind of see more of the shadow down this back side of the head so I'm going to just kind of pull this down a little bit further down in through here and again that'll just sell the story more like this hat's bigger it's you know providing more more you know 
height and is casting more of a shadow. Again, going to reload my brush with my black and brown to give myself a little bit of a shadow underneath the actual scarf. I'll bring this up in through here. I'll bring, let's see here, I think I'm going to have, um, I think I'm going to have this piece on top. There we go. So you can just put the shadows on the sides of the, whatever one that you want to look like it's on top. It doesn't totally look like a knot, but it at least gives me the dimension that I'm, I'm looking for to show one piece is in front of the next. I'll put a little bit of the shadow underneath here. And then when I get to these ones on the body, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with her, which is I will get the shadow to kind of come pull away from that scarf a little bit and then just maybe kind of come down the side of him. So that'll make it look like there's a little bit of a shadow that the scarf has lifted away. And then same thing over here, a little bit of a shadow underneath there. I feel like I want a shadow underneath here as well. So I'm going to put a little bit of black and brown on my brush to make sure I have a nice deep shadow inside the um, inside the sled. I know I'm wa walking away from my scarf for a minute here, but I feel it's necessary. So we're gonna we're gonna walk away from the scarf for just a second. Get this deep shadow in here. I really want this little leg to look like it's popping out from from inside there. So that is definitely necessary to do that. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush so I can get um, the high. Oh, I need a shadow on my hat too. Hold on one second. Black and brown's going back on my brush. I washed it prematurely. So black and brown's going on my brush and I'm going to give myself my shadow on this back side of the hat. So again, black and brown is on my brush and you can just tap it in. You don't necessarily have to brush, brush, brush. I like to use this, you know, dotting type of technique when I'm doing these, um, these cloth knit um, pieces of clothing because it really just gives you, you that textural effect and it really has um, significant impact when you're when you do it this way and then I'm going to um, load my brush with my red paint to make sure that I have that good second layer on there and it's nice and wet and I'll do the same thing for the scarf portion and then I'll add that bit of a highlight making sure that this kind of blends in so just getting that all on there, making sure I have this second layer of wet paint on my scarf, right in through here. And then I'm going to add that little bit of a highlight. So without washing my brush, I'm just picking up a little bit of white paint and I'm going to get this could again look either like snow or like just a little highlight at the top showing that there's that bit of um, texture to it. I can't tell you the number of knit hats I've had in my day and they all had lots of texture, especially after you washed them a whole bunch of times. They seem to get, um, I don't know if it's fluffier, but they seem to definitely take on a unique texture the more that you would wash. <laughs> my aunt and my mom used to make us lots of hats and scarves and mittens and all kinds of winter clothing when I was a kid. So I'm very familiar with the fluffiness. <laughs> and then I'm just kind of dotting in my little highlights in through here. And then we are going to be utilizing our uh, small brush or no, our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your um, medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish our snow underneath our sled and in the back of the sled. I'm using my big brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, white, and if I feel I need to, maybe a little bit of my blue as well. So really all I'm gonna be doing is kind of rubbing in a little bit of a shadow underneath my sled. I also want there to look like there is some um, a trail behind them from them sledding down, and then I want some snow being kicked up in front of them. So I'm going to put a teeny tiny bit of brown and black on my brush at the same time. I really only need a teeny tiny bit. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to rub it in underneath my sled. So something like this is going to give me a little bit of a shadow. I think I want a little bit more black just so I can have um, it a little bit darker than my my. There we go, a little bit darker than my actual sled itself. 
So just kind of rubbing in a little shadow underneath there. You can use a little bit of water on your brush also to give you um, the fluidity of it and to get it to kind of rub into the, um, or blend into the snow next to it. So I just added a tiny bit of water onto my brush just to kind of get this to blend in a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I just kind of rub it in. I'm gonna add some additional snow on top of it, on top of here in a second, but right now I'm just kind of getting this little trail, this little shadow next to it. And then while, my, while I have this kind of color combination on my brush, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize it for a little trail behind here. So again, I ha hardly have any paint on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of take this and go behind the sled. So I want it to look like it's coming out in the, in the direction. And if you bump into your scarf and you feel like you need to do any additional work on your scarf later, that's totally fine. I just wanna give it this look like they're really coming down the hill and they've got this, you know, trail behind them so you can certainly feel free to finagle that whatever way looks the best to you and then without washing my brush i'm just going to pick up a little bit of um, white paint make sure that this all kind of works together and that it all kind of looks like it's part of the hill in through here so just kind of giving myself this extra bit of snow in through here and then i'm going to give myself a little bit of a kick up of the snow in front of it, but right now just kind of working this in. I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my tree blue, so that medium uh, blue color, just to get this all to kind of work in and make sure it looks like it's going downhill. That's my my main goal here, and <laughs> get it to look like it's kind of flying down the hill and that they are kind of bringing that snow with them as they are, as they're kind of coming down this hill. So this is looking pretty good to me. And then I'm gonna kick up some of that snow in the front, just bringing this around and wiggling my brush a little bit. I'm gonna pick up more white paint on my brush right now so I can get it to kind of kick up. So I have a good amount of white paint on my brush right now, and I'm just gonna kind of take it, give it pretty heavy in the front area of the, of the, um, of the sled, and I'm gonna get it to kind of pop up and make you feel like it's being shooting up from the front of that sled. And maybe even some of it's kind of being kicked out over here. This is where that gray background will help to sell that story. If you have that a little bit of dark snow underneath, you'll be able to see these little splays of snow being kicked up even more. So if you're getting to a point and you're like, oh, well, I can't really see this snow in front, then you can certainly just add some of the, um, some of the darker snow around it and that'll help those little pieces be more evident. And then we're gonna utilize our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your snow all nice and kicked up, you can put this large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some snowman arms. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white, and I'm really just gonna make these look like sticks, <laughs> branches of sorts sticking out the side. But I want them to kind of tell a story and have a little bit of movement to them. So I'm gonna be um, initially using some black and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start with this little guy here. I really want him to look like he is totally having some fun, so his arms, are going to be just kind of splaying out like he's got this big branch hand that has its fingers stretched far out and he's just having a super good time so he he's having a joyful he has a joyful arm that's happening in through here and then I'm gonna have this one kind of coming out the side of his body in through here and maybe kind of kicking up in through here with his little his little branch hand, something like this. And if you feel you wanna go in front or behind a, um, a piece of clothing, feel free to do so. I also, if I feel like I would have a shadow, what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of water on my brush 
so there's a little translucency to it and then I'll pull a little bit of a shadow down from that particular appendage if I feel that it warrants it and I felt like that that would warrant it so I brought one down in through there so I'm gonna go ahead and move to my lady here so again just some um, black and brown and maybe a little bit of water on your brush to um, get it to give you some good um, smooth lines. I want her to look like she's kind of holding on to him. So I think I'm going to have her arm is going to kind of come out from under her scarf in through here. And I think I'm going to have it behind this one. So you're going to see in through here. And then she's going to have her little hand something like this. So you can have fun if your scarf is um, sitting somewhere different, you can certainly just have it um, laying on like that. And then of course I'll wash and dry my brush, or excuse me, just put a little water on it. I won't see her other arm. So this one I'm just gonna, maybe I'll put a touch of brown and water on it. I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow kind of just coming down in through here, like we're seeing a little bit of a shadow of that arm like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do his. So again, a little bit of black and um, brown and maybe a touch of water. I'm gonna have um, this arm over here is gonna be hanging on to the, um, to the sled. So I've got this just kind of coming out over in through here and it's gonna just kind of reach down in through here and then he's got maybe like some, some fingers, some branch fingers, <laughs> whatever we want to refer to them as, some branch fingers in through here. And you can, of course, modify yours whatever way that you want, but just a little bit of black is gonna start. I'll put a little tiny highlight in a minute once I got them all in place, but right now just kind of getting them in place to see where I want them. I want this one also, I want them to have one in through here. I'm thinking that this arm is gonna go on top of his scarf. It's looking like I should have it on top. So I'm gonna put this one coming out from right about here and it's gonna reach over his scarf into this vicinity right in through here. And then he's gonna have some, some branch fingers like this that are just kind of hanging on for dear life as they're going really fast down the hill. Maybe he's got a little branch finger that's coming off the side in through here like that. And then again, if you feel like you'd have a shadow, like I feel like I would have a shadow on this one. So I'm just putting a little bit of water on my brush and I feel like it would be on top of the scarf piece in through here. So we're just gonna kind of put a little shadow coming over the scarf piece and maybe this, oh, we'd have a little bit maybe coming in through here. Actually, this would have a little shadow here as well. So this that helped because that helped tell me that I need a shadow coming in through here as well. There we go. And that's going right on top of the, yeah, there we go. It kind of blends in together. And then I'm gonna put a tiny bit of um, a highlight on these. So I'm just gonna put a little white on my brush, white and maybe a little brown. So white and brown and just give myself a little tiny bit of a highlight on these so they look like they've got a little form to them. And then once you've got the form or snow, whatever you wanna make it look like. And then once I've got these all done, I am going to um, be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So just giving myself a little bit of definite or a little bit of information on top of these so they look like they've got some kind of structure and a little bit of um, depth to them. And then once I do that, I'm gonna wash and dry my small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be signing it with my small brush and black paint. I'm going bottom left. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or your full name or the D or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a fun winter image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.